In late March, it's time for the start of the Formula One season and teams are working hard to prepare their cars. Like here at Panasonic Toyota Racing, where in 2009, the TF109 will be the car they place their faith in. Not only the cars are new, the new set of regulations for the upcoming season poses great challenges for the team, the cars, and the drivers. It will be different. I mean, the new aerodynamics, uh, front and rear wing, they look completely different to 2008. The whole car looks different. And um, so far, I think nobody knows really where we are, where all the other teams are, because nobody tested it uh, in a proper way. So um, it will be really interesting in the first test and especially the first race. And the racing, I think, uh, will be different as well. It will be better for the fans, a better show, and um, as well, more fun for the driver. The regulations for 2009 are completely changed. So therefore, what that means is that the, the complete design of the car, everyone starts from scratch. So every team has no idea what other teams are doing, what other teams' cars will look like. Um, <clears throat> you know, some people have taken the front wing of, or the horns of our car, and the BMW had that. And so no one has any of these things and can take it and try it and test it. It all starts from scratch, so everyone's just going to do the best job they can. And when we get to the first race, we'll see who's done the best job. And uh, I feel very confident we've done a fantastic job. Never before in the history of Formula One racing has a new set of regulations entailed so many technical changes. The cars not only look very different, they also behave much differently and demand more attention from the driver. Here's Sebastian Vettel straight from the cockpit with the details for us. This is how the cars looked in 2008. The front wing is now lower and wider. Gone are barge boards, vanes and shark gears. The exhaust is further to the rear, everything is slimmer. We can adjust the flaps 6 degrees, the nose has been made over, the rear wing is more narrow and higher. All this reduces grip, but lessens the weight behind and increases overtaking. The revs are cut down from 19 to 18,000 and we've only got 8 engines for the whole season. Some of the engines now have to last for 3 instead of 2 race weekends. More than half of the field, more than half of the 10 teams is definitely in a position to build a winning car. That's my judgment today. Nobody knows at that stage of the year who has done the best job. But it is a, it is a challenging formula. It is not, a, not just one or two teams that can win races. We remember last year, we have had, I think, five different constructors already that won races. And probably this will be more uh, this year. Much also depends on modern technology and how efficiently drivers employ it. Technology developed by car makers to save energy in conventional cars is now also being used in the Grand Prix cars. Brake energy regeneration, for instance. When braking, energy is stored in batteries and then released again when the car starts up and accelerates. In Formula One, that all function at the press of a button. The system is called KERS, and not all the teams will be using it right from the start. KERS recovers wasted kinetic energy generated under braking. It is converted into electrical energy by a generator and stored in a battery. For a boost of up to six and a half seconds per lap with an extra 82 horsepower. All at once or in bursts for blocking. But press it too early without enough grip and you'll spin off. Come back after 11 years. Slicks, no grooves, better grip and much more fun. And this year the drivers have more influence. We have to do the right thing at the right time. United Pictures TV.